Father, you are great, and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. My Savior, you are good, and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you, we bless your name. For the time that you give unto us, we are asking that uh, you guide us. We are asking that uh, you lead us. We are asking, Lord God, that, that your spirit we speak, that your spirit we teach us, that you will show us your ways. We honor you for all. We commit everything in your hands. And uh, we are asking, Lord, that your spirit we completely take over and that you will speak unto us so we may receive from thee now and evermore. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. 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 I bless the name of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice to bless the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Just lift up your voice. Shout unto the God. Shout unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Shout unto Jesus Christ. He's worthy of your shout. He's worthy of your praise. He's worthy of your voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when we say lift up your voice, it does not mean lift up your heart. It means your voice, like your vocal voice. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we bless the name of God because he is uh, helping us uh, to go through. And then I believe that as he will uh, speak unto us today, we will continue on our word that we have had last Sunday, which is uh, in the beginning was the word. Hallelujah. That's not the word. The word. <laughs> not the worm, the word. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the beginning was the word. The Lord Jesus has established unto us that in everything we ought to do, it ought to be first and foremost the word of God that has started. Now from there, we're going to build and then to see how God prosper the word that he gives. For he says that my word will not come out of my mouth except, uh, uh, my word will not come back to me, amen, except that he has accomplished, fulfilled, completed Hallelujah. So the word that Jesus Christ has spoken over your family, the word that our father has spoken over your family, the word that the Lord has spoken over your activities, your enterprise, your business, the word that he has spoken over your personal life, he says that word will not come back to him until he has fulfilled. If he has called you to be a, a champion. If he's called you to be a conqueror, hallelujah, you are to be a champion and a conqueror, hallelujah. Amen. So that word will not come back. Oh, Jesus. Let me explain to you. He called Jacob to be first. Jacob went anywhere he wanted. When he finished, he came back, he became first. Are you what I'm saying? The word that God has spoken over your life will not go void until it has fulfilled. Hallelujah. Again, when he called Jacob, he said between Jacob and Esau, even though Esau came out first, he said Esau will not be the first, that Jacob will be the first. Jacob went his ways. He did all he wanted to do. When he finished, he came back to the word. That word will not go until it is Feel. Lift up your hand and pray. Say, Lord, your word you have spoken over me. Let it be fulfilled. 
completely, entirely, in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you. He says, there is nothing that will separate me from the love of God manifested through Christ Jesus. So when God speaks his word, that word goes and dig under your, uh, uh, your, resin, uh, your roots. Hallelujah. That word goes and dig in your root, take out of your root, take off your root and pull you out to plant you somewhere else. You see, when he want, when he spoke the word to Abraham, he said, get thee out. So that word went in the root of Abraham. Are you what I'm saying? Took him out and then went and planted him somewhere else. Does it make sense? So the word of God will break the curse that was at the root. So that the word he plants you, he plants you clean. Because he cannot plant you with the fruit and the root of yesterday. Uh, 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 uh. He, he says, that's why he said, I trim you so you bear what? He said, I called you. You did not call me first. And I have appointed you so that you bear fruit. I, I, I want you to picture that correctly. By the time he calls you, by the time he speaks over you, that word is at work so that regardless how far you go, that word will bring you at the beginning so you bear fruit. Listen, God says, my word I have spoken will not come void to me. So is a man able to make the voice, I mean, to, to, is a man able to make the word of God void? Some people have become great devil worshippers. But in the beginning, God spoke unto the mother or the father that this child will serve me. And the guy went, he became a devil worshipper. He became an idol worshipper. He went, 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 went. In the devil worshipper there, he saw Jesus. There was a guy from uh, South Africa. The guy has completely turned his heart to the devil. And he has made a altar to the devil. But his mother has received a word concerning him that he will honor the Lord. But his life has completely gone astray. But you see, the word of God makes somebody pray on that word so that prod can germinate. Are you what I'm saying? So he went, went, went from South Africa. When he finished to do all he wanted, he said he went because he wanted to have an experience to see demonic activities. And as he was engaging in those experiences, suddenly the Lord Jesus interrupted the demonic activity. You tell me about who? Paul. Hallelujah. It was Lord Jesus who sent him to Damascus. Amen. He did not invite Jesus either. He was literally fighting Jesus. Hallelujah. So he was doing everything contrary to the will of God. And as he was going to kill the children of God, the word of God said that the Lord appeared unto him. Amen. On his ways, he manifested. Sometimes when God steps into your plate, you don't even realize because he just suddenly appeared to tell you that you are mine. So that word that God has spoken will not come back to him for it. That word that he has spoken will not come back to him void. Except he has fulfilled, completed, and made it full. Hallelujah. And prosper into it. Let's take the book of first of, of John. Gonna read again chapter one. 
chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, in was the, the beginning word. was the word. So we have established it last Sunday that when you start something, you must know and make sure that the word of God is there. If the word of God is not there, you still have what we call the bridge of reparation, which is repentance. Hallelujah. In order to bring the word where it's supposed to be. Amen. Because the word of God is what he's holding the entire earth. So if he holds the entire earth and the entire universe, he can hold you. So we have established it. Let's continue, please. In the beginning was uh -huh. the word. And the word was with God, mm -hmm. and the word was God. Mm -hmm. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Mm. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. This is what God, God is saying. As he entered your life, as he brought his word in your life, suddenly everything that you do start now getting form and shape. In that word, there was life. Hallelujah. In that word, there was life. And as life entered in that word, everything you start on touching. That's why the word of God says that the, whatever that your hand touch shall what? Hallelujah. So the word of God in your life sat now germinating life. It says in him was life and the life was the light of men. Now, as you start now doing certain things in your life, you become as a clarity or a help for somebody else. When God puts you in your hand something, you may believe that what he has given unto you is for you, but it's not for you first. It is for somebody. Because it asks you plant that you become able to reap so that uh, you can give so that you can receive more. That, does it make sense? Put it this way. A farmer who plants and sells, that farmer will have what? Money. Are you following what I'm saying? But if he plant and he eat all, he will have what? So God puts things in your hand by his word to build you so that as he builds you, he uses you to build his kingdom. Hallelujah. Continue verse 5. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now, you see, when you have the word of God in your life, the people around you cannot comprehend you when you have the word of God in your life. Because the word of God in your life, when you are in places which are dark, those darkness cannot comprehend how you operate. You know, in the time of her COVID, my wife went to work and then they were telling her all the time, why are you so happy? They were complaining. They were not glad that she was able to be glad uh, in a time of uh, sadness. So they were always complaining that we don't understand why you are not afraid, why you are not scared, why you are not so, so, and so, so, and so. Because the word of God that is in you is that word that gives you the hope of glory. And that hope of glory, what it means is that until you see it, you will not let go. Say, Lord, until I see your glory, I will not let it go. Until I see your glory, I will not let it go. Listen. It, we were praying earlier. And Pastor Martin prayed. He said, he, he said this. He said that you have to make sure that you have sacrifice. Sacrifice of prayer, sacrifice of praise, sacrifice of thanksgiving. But it's when you have sacrifice that then there is fire. Hallelujah. I read again. It's when you bring sacrifice, then there is fire. If you ask for the fire without bringing the sacrifice, you will find yourself not having that fire. 
Does it make sense? So you start first by bringing the sacrifice of praise, by bringing the sacrifice of worship, by bringing the sacrifice of prayer. And as you start with that, fire arises. Why? Because the word of God wants you to build. The word of God wants you to build. But you cannot build because the strength that is in you is limited. Hallelujah. The strength that is in me is limited. He said unto you, Paul, he said, my grace is, for in my weakness, then the Lord shows himself stronger. Amen. So because the word of God in our lives becomes the catapult, catalyst. Hallelujah. Because the word of God in our lives becomes the catalyst of Causing us to continue when you are getting tired, when you are getting frustrated, when you are getting too much anxious, when you are getting dep de depressed. The word of God says just go back to bring sacrifice. And that word we start on bringing life and fire where you need. And as you bring life and fire where you need, then suddenly you start on producing. In the beginning, he was there. And because he was there in the beginning, then I know I can arrive. Now the question is how much of fire you need Ah, uh, Lord Jesus. How much of fire you need? Because let me tell you something. The amount of fire depends on the amount of sacrifice. You see, if you want to boil uh, water to drink um, tea, okay? You take your cup or your pot, you put it on the stove. That amount of fire you put under depends on what you want to do with that, come here, with that water. If you put that on the stove and you let it boil, you agree with me that you, you will not drink your tea now. So because you want to drink tea, you intentionally reduce the fire. But you see, when you are in the spirit, when you are not drinking enough, when you are not letting the word of God penetrate you enough, you only drink spiritual tea. Your fire is always low. I don't, I don't know if, if I make sense. But you need more fire because in that fire, you can now separate and then you can distribute the fire. Does it make sense? And as you start distributing the fire, the Spirit of God will help you to kind of also somebody else. That's why it is important to bring sacrifice to the Lord. I pray that you are following what I'm saying. We need fire so that the word of God that he has spoken fulfill what he has said. For us to keep on going and that word keep on pushing us, we need to bring the sacrifice of praise, sacrifice of prayer, sacrifice of worship, sacrifice of fasting, thanksgiving. As you bring those sacrifices, God is presenting the fire. Read, please. Verse 6, mm -hmm. there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Verse 11. 
He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now, let me, let me break it down. In the beginning was the fire, sorry, was the word. And somebody came to speak of that word. That person, when he was speaking of that word, he says, when that word comes in your life, it will bring what? Baptize you with? The word brings fire. Because it is fire that gets you going. Whether in business, whether in teaching, whether in marriage, whether in parenting, whatever in ministry, it is the fire of God that gets you going. Because that fire is kindled by the word he has spoken in the beginning. So John spoke of the fire, saying he will come and baptize you with that fire. When he baptized you with that fire, suddenly you are no longer born as of human being born. Suddenly you are born of God. What it means? It means that your way of thinking will be as God wants you to think. Which, give me verse 12. Give me verse 12. But as many as receive him. So I want you to receive him in the sense of word. Hallelujah. As many as receive the word. Because we're talking about the word. In the beginning was the word. The world was with God, and the world was God. We're talking about Jesus Christ. Amen? So, when you have the word, and you have received that word, what does it mean to receive the word? Simple. Let me take an example. The word of the Lord says, you shall be at the head, and not at the tail. Is that the word? When you receive, what happened? Huh? It transforms you. It transforms you. So meaning if you were at the tail, what happened? Suddenly you go at the head. When you receive that word, you are not just pregnant of that word. When you receive that word, you are transformed by that word. And you give an evidence of that word. So, as many as receive the word in them. What is the word of God you need to receive in order to become? I, I pray that uh, you are following what I'm saying. Which word of God you need to receive in order to become? I told you last time, I said, do not pray the fake prayer. Where you need money. And you go to the Lord, you say, Lord, all I need is you. And then you are broke, and now you are complaining why you are broke. But because you do not ask for money. You feel what I'm saying? Because God, who knows your heart, knows that you were not really intentionally coming to say that all you need is him. You needed money, but you acted like all I need is you. So you wanted to become more holy than God. So God said, okay, be holy. <laughs> now you broke. And then now you are, are you feel what I'm saying? So you cannot go to God and lie to God in prayer. He says, ask, and it shall be given. So what do you need? If the need is to love him, then you ask. If the need is to pray him, you ask. If the need is to become like him, you ask. But if in your heart the need is something else, you must also ask it. Now, some people will say, Lord, let my competitor, all of them, fail. That's, that's, <laughs> hallelujah. Some people now will start praying, oh, Lord, my neighbor is bothering too much. Let him die. Uh-uh, 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 <laughs> Amen. The need that you're asking will be fulfilled according to what is righteous. What is the word of God 
you need to receive in order to become. If you want to become great, he gave a word. He said, serve. Hallelujah. If you want to be at the head, he gave the word obey. If you want to become, you got to receive that word that you need. So now my question for each one of us, which word you need to receive in order to become? Uh, he, he said, Jesus, amen. You got to answer that question in your spirit. What is the word throughout the entire word of God? From Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 22. Which word you need is, the servant says, the, the, the centurion says, Lord, say a, say only a, Word. So which word do you need? Listen. Do not be. Uh, Lord, let help us. Do, I do not say which words. I say which word do you need? The reason why sometimes you are not receiving your need is because you don't express them. The reason why your need are not being I would say that met, there you go, is because you do not express them. You just put it again. He said you do not have because you do not ask. What is the word of God, I repeat again, that you need in honor to, in order to become? Faith, hope, greatness. What is the word of God you need? I will not pass until you receive it. There is something that you need that will change your entire course, your entire line. Let me put it this way. If you want to win the race, and then you have everything, but you don't have the strength, you're, you're, you're not going to make it. Because what you need is the strength. The young ruler came unto the Lord. He had had all. Hallelujah. And the Lord Jesus says, there is how many you lack? One thing you lack. You see, in your life, you can know exactly where you're struggling. Whether you struggle in faith, whether you struggle in prayer, whether you struggle in humility, whether you struggle in truth, whether you struggle, you, you know there is something where you're struggling that when you meet it, it will change the entire course of your life. What is the word of God? That's where the Lord is holding me there. I cannot continue. What is the word of God? That you need today in order to become that word today. For through that word, life came. Through that word, all things were made. Without that word, nothing was made. So there was one word that made everything. Give me Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. That's where the Lord is sending us. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Now, go ahead, read for me. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the Spirit. You have to replace Spirit here by word. Because Jesus Christ says, my word, word. is our, 
what? Spirit and life. Hallelujah. When that word which is spirit comes in you, you are no more born of the flesh of man, but of the will of God. So the way you start thinking, the way you start functioning is no more as you used to be. And then in that, you will have to receive one word that will open everything else. You need one key. And where the Lord is sending me is in this one. Among what you need. Read again. Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So bring my back to verse 22. So you have love, joy, peace, Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Hallelujah. That's where the Lord is bringing us. Bring back again. Let's on 22. From love. What is love? God. What is God? No, God is truth. When God talks about love, he talks about truth. When the Lord says, I love you, what he means is telling the truth. Hallelujah. So in the spirit you need love, joy, or peace, or suffering. Among this, which one you're lacking the most? You see, some of you, you don't have long suffering because you complain all the time. Hallelujah. So what you need is long suffering. Some of you, you don't have peace because you think too much. And what he says, he said, let your thoughts be brought captive to the knowledge of Christ. And anything that is good, noble, and worthy, you got to put your thought on them. So whether it is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Some of you, you don't have faith because the word of God has not yet penetrated your heart. Let me put it this way. I want everybody to stand up. And I will tell you what faith is. When the word of God penetrates your heart, this is how he goes. I will say a word. If you hear it, you do it. If you don't hear it, you don't do it. Okay? Did you hear, did you hear what I said? You know why? Because I, I read again. Stand up. Uh, uh, you heard what I said? What I said? <laughs> no, I did not say sit. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's good. You are in the spirit. I want to show you how faith works. The word of God says in the Hebrew chapter what? Verse. It says, now faith is. Hallelujah. And then in that portion, there is also evidence and demonstration. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to do exactly what I will say. If you hear it, you do it. If you are watching and you're driving, you can stop your car. Uh -huh, and then you will do it. <laughs> they are prophetic. Because I did say go. Hallelujah. But did you hear what I said? Why did you do it? Did you hear it with your hearing? I heard it in my spirit. <laughs> F 
faith is focusing on what God says. You may not hear it with your hearing, but you can hear it with your spirit. It is a prompt that calls you suddenly, yeah, like you're driving, and then you always go right. Always. Every time you drive and then you go somewhere that you know, you always go right. And one day you're driving, and suddenly as you are about to turn right, there is a prompt that tells you go left. If you learn to hear it at that left, you, it will be like a, that day where that guy was running, and then suddenly what happened? Money were falling from the, the, the sky because there was a, tra I say a train. Uh, 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 I, I say a train. <laughs> a plane going by who had an open window where the money came out. I'm going to say one word again. <laughs> Hallelujah. L listen, listen. It might be, it might be some, but we are in the prophetic. Because there are things you don't have because you haven't perceived yet. And what God is doing in your life is to open your eyes a little further. To cause you to start perceiving in the spirit, grab it, pull it down, and manifest it. And the word that is penetrating your heart today is faith. That's what is penetrating your heart, faith. Lord, give me faith. Faith. Lord, give me faith. The Bible says in Hebrew 11, by faith, a good report was given of the forefathers. What is lacking you is faith. Am I right? Faith. You need faith. It's not faith like, like, you know, there is a sister, a neighbor, her name is faith. That's not, that's not her you need. <laughs> Amen. You need faith. What is faith? Faith is that you don't see it. You don't touch it. But you don't wait for it to come. You go to it to seize, to pull it down. Let me read again. Give me verse 11. Verse, sorry, um... Hebrew 11, verse 1. Hallelujah. You have it on the screen for us? Hebrew 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You're not seeing it. Okay? All you have is a hope of seeing it. But as you start now getting into that move of faith, you start telling to yourself, if it is penetrating my heart, it's because it is evident. Are you what I'm saying? If the thought that is godly is penetrating my heart, is because it is evident. Even if I did not hear the voice of God audibly, I know that the thought that is penetrating my heart comes from what I perceive from the Spirit. I read again. Even if I did not hear the voice of the Lord audibly, I know that as I'm following Him, as I'm walking in His steps, hallelujah, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and, and, and the word was God, and the word was with God, and by it all things were made. So as I walk in him and follow in his step, suddenly I start hearing certain things that are clear. Now I'm going to say one thing.
if you understand what just happened, then you have understood faith. You can have faith two ways. The first way you can have faith is by the word of God, by perceiving what the Lord is saying in the spirit. The second way of having faith is by what somebody say from the word of God. He said, how would they believe unless they, how would they hear unless there is a preacher? Amen? And that preacher speaks the word of God. So, there are certain things I did not say loud, but you perceived it and you moved with it. That is spirit of God. And then when I say sit, you sat because it penetrated your heart and you functioned with it and you became it and you sat down. So faith is when it tells you you will succeed and then you are not questioning it. Faith is that you are not questioning how will that come to pass. Because when I told you sit down, the reason why you sat is because you were at the right position. Let, stand up again. Stand up again. Stand up. And if, if, if you cannot move further, just move on the side, okay? I want you to do five steps. Okay. Now, this is what I'm going to tell you. Where you at as you are standing, Sit. Uh, 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 please stand up. <laughs> you see, your sit now is different. I was not saying sit on the floor. I was, I was asking you to sit on your chair. Move again, move again, move out, move out. Move out of your chair. No, no, you're not going in your chair. <laughs> move, uh, you, you are too spiritual. Move out of your chair. <laughs> move away from your chair. Now, where you at as you are standing? I want you to sit on your chair. No, you, no, no, no. Without moving. I want you to show how faith works. I want you to sit on your chair without moving. No, you are not sitting. Okay. Let me explain to you faith again. Faith is when, please go sit down. Faith is when you are at the proper time, at the proper place, in the proper environment. Then you can function correctly. When you are on, before your chair, you know that one when I see, uh, come here, sit down, you know you are right at the right time, at the right place, at the right position, time. So you just function it and you sit down. If you are away from your chair and I say sit down, now you have to manufacture something. Does it make sense? When you see you're struggling too much in what you're doing, it means you are not operating in faith. Or you are not in the right time. Or you are not in the right position. So in order to start operating in the flow, start bringing into fire out by sacrifice. Now you start praying, Lord, give me your will. Let me know what's going on. Lord, show me the source of what is causing me to lack or to dysfunction. Lord, are you know what I'm saying? Now, if you, if you receive the answer, God can tell you what you need is that uh, you need to go out and walk uh, uh, 25 miles. I heard about that. Hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now you heard what God said, but you're lacking something else. Hallelujah. Now what makes you not to do what God tells you to do is what we call the spirit of heaviness. You have heard what God wants you to do, but you are still... Huh? Lingering. What you say? 
contemplating. Hey, should I, should I, should I, should, should I? Um, but if I go, that's how doubt has completely taken over. When in the beginning there is a word, that word will baptize you with fire. To give you the stamina and the strength to keep on pressing, whether there be one or no one. You will keep on pressing until you see what the word has said. When the Lord Jesus came out to start his ministry, the people he first preached to were not a crowd of 5,000. The people he appeared first to were not his people. It was the people of somebody else, John the Baptist. What I'm trying to say is this. There are things you need to start, but you need to be into the alignment of something else or someone else in order to be able to boom. God will present you Either by strength, I say by strength, either by someone or suddenly by supernatural. What it means is this. When God wants you to start something, he can give you all the things and the tools you need. And yet you may lack understanding on how to put them together. Does it make sense? And if you lack understanding on how to put them together, that's when someone else can help you to understand what that is. But for you to really believe that it is yours to do it, you have to have faith. You must have faith. Now give me Hebrew 11 again, and then we'll con conclude here. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elder obtain a hmm. It was by faith that they obtained a report that was called good. Both themselves and of themselves. What people said about them was based upon what they did by faith. And what they obtained by faith was based upon the evidence even of the things they did not see. And even though they did not see, they hoped for it. Why they hoped for it? Because they heard the word. Verse 3. Through faith, we understand. Go ahead, read. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. What do you want to start? What do you want to do? You may not have all the equipment in your hands, but the law says you have to move as if they were. Hallelujah. And then verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Hallelujah. Amen. Continue. By faith. Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Uh, this word has always touched me. The word translated. Not transported. Translated. That word always touched me. The word of God says in the book of Genesis that Enoch walked with God and was no more. For God took him. And in Hebrew... The took him is called translated. By faith, he was translated. This is how it works. By faith, you go and you speak to someone. But the person is not in the same dimension like you. He does not understand the same principle. He does not have the same desire like you. Let's say, for instance, you go to somebody and then you say, okay, can I have this, 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 this? 
for the person to give that to you, it have to, to it, it, it have to be translated into his understanding. You follow what I'm saying? I, I hope you follow what I'm saying. If I speak in Chinese, for you to function from what I say, it has to be translated into what you understand in English or French. So, what you need also to ask to God is to translate you. What does it mean? Translate means favor. That's what it means. It means that you present yourself before somebody and God calls you to have favor before the person. And what you say, you obtain by faith because of the favor upon your life. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? God made Enoch to be translated. He obtained favor from God to not see death. He was obtained into the heaven because he walked with God. He walked with God because of the word. He walked with God because of the word. The Lord Jesus says, if you love me, do what? Hallelujah. If, if you love me, so there is a condition, if. If the fulfillment of that if is made, then you will know you made that fulfillment by obeying the command, the word. Say, Lord, translate me in faith. Lord, translate me in faith. Lord, translate me in faith. You are walking in the world of God and suddenly you were taken and put in position of faith. And suddenly from yesterday to now, from this hour to that hour, from that minute to this minute, you are suddenly changed and suddenly transformed. And by that faith, God says you will obtain a good. Mm. Ah, Lord Jesus. I don't know which report you're looking for. The Lord said, by faith, you will obtain a good report. Now let me conclude. There are two things you need. The word of God at the root that brings you the fire and faith to cause things to appear even as. Faith is like being, let me put it this image. Faith it's not just refusing the bad report. Faith is knowing the good report trumped over the bad report. Because when the people of Egypt oppressed the Israelites, their mind changed. And when they went out to possess the land, because their mind changed, they could not see the report of God. What they saw in the land was the giants, right? That was a bad report. But by faith, Caleb and Joshua used a good report to trump over the bad report. So faith is not denying the report of what is existing. Faith is trumping that report with the truth of God. And he said, I shall be at the head. I will be blessed in my going. I will be blessed in my coming in. I will be blessed in my staying. He said, I will be at the head and not at the tail. He said, I will not borrow, but I will lend. 
And he says, by doing so, I will continue to increase the kingdom of God. And by that faith in Christ Jesus, I will obtain a good heavenly report. Because in the beginning of all, the word of God was found. I pray that today the Lord translates you suddenly into faith. That he calls you to become not just a person of faith, but you become faith. That you walk not just by faith, but you walk saturated in faith. I pray that the, from today on, your move and your step, your brain will give way to the spirit of God to cause you to spread faith, to cause you to speak faith, to cause you to breathe faith, to cause you to digest faith, to cause you to become faith, to cause you to see faith, to cause you to walk in faith, to cause you to be saturated by faith, to cause you to pray by faith, to cause you to sing by faith, to cause you to operate by faith, to cause you to function by faith, to cause you to see by faith, to cause you to speak by faith, to cause you to become faith of God. That the spirit of God, that is the true spirit of the living God, that has called you for such a time like this, what lets you go until it has operated and done a surgical spiritual change, remove your heart of stone and plant his heart there? That God himself, we step in your plate and change the circumstances. I pray that the word of God that is true, that brings life and life in abundance, bring life now in every area where darkness was in your life, that that does not go out and the light of Christ comes in and by that light you become life and that life it will be seen of men and you'll be translated by the power of God. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah.